Hey there, Norman here from WoCode, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Business Directory widget. This widget offers a card layout for displaying multiple directory items. It also has very robust and easy to use search and filtering options, as well as the ability to have each card open in a modal, which will show additional information that isn't available in the card layout. The way that listings are populated into this widget is by either being added manually within the content tab of the widget or by connecting the widget to an Airtable spreadsheet. We'll go over both methods in this video. However, the preferred method is going to be to use the Airtable spreadsheet. This will allow you or your client to easily manage the listings and update the directory without needing to enter the editor or republishing the site. An even more powerful way to use this widget is by connecting it to a dynamic page that leverages the Airtable to display even more content. We'll go over how to connect to a dynamic page in our last video of this three-part training series. But with that being said, this widget's a great option for restaurants, charity events, sponsors, local city websites, and much more. So let's go ahead and jump into the builder and take a look at this widget's option panel as well as how to access the Airtable template. Here in the builder, we have our veterinary clinic template. And if we scroll down here below the clinic info section, I'd like to add a directory to showcase a list of the local animal shelters that this clinic partners with. So let's go ahead and open up that widgets panel and let us grab that business directory widget, drag drop into a new row. Okay, let's jump into the options panel here and take a look at how this widget is set up. Before we discuss all of the options in the content tab, I'd like to first go over how the listings are manually created in this widget. This method is done by using the directory listings manual entry option. In here, you can manually add listings directly into the widget. I'm going to quickly add an entry so that we can see how this will populate the widget. These options are pretty straightforward. So I'll get those added and then I'll come back and we'll take a look at how this looks in the widget when I'm done. Okay, now that we have our listing added into the widget, let's go ahead and preview this and see how that looks. We can see in our preview that the listing is displaying great. We have all of our content that we added as well as our functioning modal. Let's open up that widgets panel one more time. And because we're going to be connecting this to an air table, I'm going to go ahead and just delete out this manual entry. And for now, we'll just go over the remainder of the content tab, starting from the top and working our way down. We have the unique ID. If you're planning on using more than one business directory on a page, then you'll use the unique ID field to give each widget a different ID. The grid columns, this will set how many columns are visible in the widget on the desktop layout. Tablet grid columns will set how many columns are visible in the widget wall on the tablet layout. Item per page, this is how many items are visible in the widget before additional pagination buttons will be generated. Next, we have our Airtable template hyperlink, which we'll go over in just a moment in further detail. Below that, we have our directory listings for manual entry, which we've just discussed. We have our card links too. This changes whether clicking the card will open the modal or redirect to a different page. Below that, we have our filters position. This changes the filter options to display on the left or right side of the directory. We have category filter, which enables or disables the category filter options. We have tags filter that sets whether or not the tags are visible in the widget. And we have customized labels. In here, you can change almost every label within the widget. This is also a great way to update the directory for different languages as well. So now that we've gone over the rest of the content tab, let's dial our attention to this Airtable template hyperlink. So to access the Airtable template for this widget, simply click this template hyperlink. The Airtable template will open in a new tab. And from here, you'll want to click the copy base button on the top right of the page. You'll want to make sure that you're logged into your Airtable account. And then after you click the base, you'll be asked where you'd like to add the new base. Once you've made a copy, simply locate that sheet and open it. Now you'll be greeted with your copy of the template. And by default, the template comes with a ton of content pre-added. However, you can modify this and add or remove content as needed. Just note that you'll want to keep the same formatting for each column. 
For example, the enable column needs to stay as a checkbox field. The image and the logo columns need to stay as image fields, as well as the business hours column needs to retain the same formatting for any entries in this column. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and update this Airtable off screen real quick with my own content, and I'll be right back when I'm finished with that. I'm back and I've got all my content updated in this spreadsheet. I've got all my images, my logos, my names, all the information that I'm going to need for our veterinary clinic website. And that's going to do it for the first business directory widget video. This video was a quick overview of the content panel, as well as how to access and update the Airtable. You'll want to make sure to check out part two of the training videos for more information on how to create the collection that powers the business directory and how to connect that collection to the widget. And part three is going to go over how to connect that collection to a dynamic page, as well as add additional content that is otherwise not visible in the business directory widget.